Bonjour, this is Fabulously Delicious, the French food podcast. It's a podcast that's all about the cuisine that was said to have founded modern cooking. French ingredients and dishes, they've been the starting block for many of the world's best chefs and cooks. And on Fabulously Delicious, will you learn all about those dishes and ingredients, as well as get to know more about fabulous French foodies. I'm your host, Andrew Pryor. Enchanté. Enchanté. My life changed when I competed on MasterChef Australia, and now I'm living my best life right here in the French countryside. Well, technically not here because this isn't my house. This is a friend's house in Brittany, but my house is located in the Vienne in Montmorillon, a little town just close to Poitiers and Limoges, which you might have heard of before. Life in the French countryside is all about cooking, eating, meeting wonderful local producers, chefs, home cooks, drinking amazing wines, eating delicious cheese, and sharing these fabulous experiences with you, my fabulously delicious audience. I hope you're enjoying them. This is the last episode where we'll revisit in our summer series. And it's a combination of two episodes that I did on regulations all about food here in France and Europe. AOC and AOP. So sit back, turn up the volume, and if you're not driving, pour yourself a glass of wine, break a baguette, add a bit of sausage on maybe, and some of that delicious cheese, and enjoy today's episode of Fabulously Delicious, as we revisit the AOC and AOP of it all here in France. AOC stands for in France, the Appellation de Origin Control, and is a label that identifies an agricultural product whose stages of production and processing are carried out in a very defined geographical area, and also the way the producers use the recognised and traditional ways to produce the product. There are technical and geographical factors set as standards for each product that holds an AOC. The products include wines, cheeses, butters and meats. Other countries within the EU have similar labelling systems. The EU has its own protected designation of origin label, PDO, and also the PGI. This also knows geographical indications. Within the EU for wine products, only the AOC label needs to be noted. The Institut National de Origine et de la Qualité, the INAO for short, is the body in France that grants the AOC. The INAO's mission is to ensure that all AOC products have clearly defined standards and that produce consistent products in a traditional manner and that they come from a designated geographical area. Other European countries have based their control place name systems on the French AOC. Like in Italy, they have the DOC and the DOCG. Spain, Germany, Portugal, Switzerland, the US, Canada and South Africa all have systems based on the French AOC status. AOC is designed to protect distinctive and traditional regional products and the way that they are made. This has been based on the concept of terroir. Terroir is a term the French give to the land basically and the environment as well as human features such as the way something is grown or made and that that has an effect on the taste and characteristics of the product and the ingredient. The French believe in the terroir and that the type of soil, the topography, the environment, the local climate and even the farming practices all have a factor in the product's uniqueness. Some of the AOC's geographical restrictions can cover large areas and some small, like the Côte d'Aron AOC for an example. It covers an area of 75,000 acres or 30,000 hectares and some 171 villages. It's the largest AOC there is. But within that, there also lies one of the smallest AOCs, the Chateau Grillet, which is less than 4 hectares or nearly 10 acres. AOC's history dates back to 1925 with the production of the Roquefort blue cheese which I actually did an episode previously on with the amazing cheese expert Will Stard. Roquefort was regulated by a parliamentary decree when regulations controlling its production and naming were first defined. France's first law determining viticultural designations of origin dates back to the 1st of August 1905 and then again on the 6th of May 1919 when a law for the protection of place of origin 
was passed specifically, noting that the region and commune that a product must be manufactured. These initial laws have been revised over many times. On the 30th of July 1935, the Committee Nationale d'Appellation d'Origin, or the CNAO as it was known, was created by government representatives and also the representatives from major wine growers. It was created to manage the administration of the AOC process for wines. This was an initiative by Joseph Kappas. Joseph was a trained lawyer and wine grower from chateauneuf de pape in the Rhone wine region. He successfully attained the legal recognition of the Côte de Rhone appellation of origin in 1936. After World War II, the CNAO then became the INAO and the AOC seal was created and was just related to wines. Then it was extended on the 2nd of July 1990 to cover other agricultural products. In France, it is illegal to manufacture and sell a product under an AOC-controlled geographical indicator if it does not comply with the AOC criteria. To prevent possible misrepresentation of the AOC name, it cannot be used on a label for a product that's not qualifying for an AOC. This can be confusing for producers of products in some areas, like for an example towns that have an AOC attributed to their name, like Cabarde for an example, which has an AOC. Some towns in the area have producers that produce products that don't have an AOC, but they can't use the name of the town in their product labels. This is a problem because French law also says that they need to identify the place of origin on the product. So in these cases, they can't note the name of the town on their label, but instead that they have to note the postcode. You can tell a product that holds an AOC because it carries a seal that displays a number on it as well as the name of the certifying body. The colour of the seal also indicates the product's classification, such as green for field products and red for dairy products. So what products have an AOC status that we might know or that we need to know about? There are over 400 French wines that are entitled to display the AOC seal on their labels. In fact, nearly half of all wines produced in France are produced with an AOC. There are over 50 cheeses that have an assigned AOC status. For an example, when it comes to cheese and an AOC, the Epoise is a washed rind cow's milk cheese from the Bourgogne. Epoise has a delicious, silky, creamy and very mild taste. It does smell a bit. It has an AOC and so its production must meet the requirements for this AOC. It became very popular and so producers thought, well, hey, why don't we just make a smaller version? It'll have the same taste, the same texture and we could even put it in the same packaging. It'll just be smaller. But because it was the smaller version, it didn't meet the AOC requirements. And so they had to call the cheese the Petit Gourgris and could not use the AOC label. With Comte cheese, which just as a side note is possibly one of my favourite cheeses, well, it's that and the Brilliant Savoir. So if you're ever coming to France and you want to buy me some cheese, you've got two options, Comte or Brilliant Savoir. But I won't knock back a cheese, to be honest. But anyway, getting back. With Comte cheese, the cows that produce the cheese for the milk must be a specific breed of cow. They also have to graze in the high pastures of the Jura Massif mountain range. Here, they graze on wildflowers and herbs specific to the area. They're probably having a lovely time. Not only do, do they have to use these specific cows in this specific area to get the status, but the number of cows grazing per hectare is also regulated. And there are even restrictions on the usage of feed, antibiotics and growth hormones. The dairies that make the Comte, well, they also need to be less than 25 kilometres from a farmer's herd. And the milk must be made into cheese within 24 hours from milking. Typically though, with a Comte cheese, the cheesemakers make it in less than 12 hours. There's meat with an AOC, like poulet de bresse which gained AOC status for the poultry in Bress on the 5th of August 1957. And in 2006, the salt marsh lamb raised in the Bay of Somme also gained AOC status. Eggs from Louis have an AOC status. 
They have a pinkish shell to them and they're very pale yellow yolk. They're delicious and creamy and well worth the cost because, well, they're not cheap. Many seafoods have been given AOC labels, like the oysters from Oloron on the Atlantic coast near La Rochelle, the St. Jacques scallops, mussels from St. Michel, and the cockles from Granville. In 1981, the lavender oil from the Haute Provence was given an AOC status because of the very high quality production values of the essential oil of fine lavender. The lavender fields must be located within a specific territory and at a minimum altitude of 800 metres. Have you ever had the French lentils de puits? For some, this is the first lentils that they've had and are the main ingredients in, in many French lentil dishes. They are lentils that come from Le Puy en Velay, and the lentil vert de Puy, or green lentils from here, have AOC status. Le Puy en Velay is part of the Haute Loire department. It's in the Auvergne Rhone Alps region of south central France. It's well known for the lentils, of course, but it also has a fabulous and very famous cathedral in the town and was an area known for its silk manufacturing in the past as well. The honey from Corsica has been given AOC status. There are actually six certified varieties of Corsican honey with an AOC. The Preton, the Marquis de Preton, Miller de Marquis, the Chateauneuve, the Marquis de and the Marquis de Autom. Salts and French food just go hand in hand. You always remember your first chunk of baguette ripped off and slathered with some butter and sprinkled with some French salt. If you haven't done this, you need to. ASAP. There are two salts with an AOC, the Sel de Grande and the Sel de Sel de Baron. In my series on the podcast of the A to Z of French herbs, I've mentioned many herbs that have an AOC. You have the thyme from Provence and the pepper from Espelette that both have AOC status. I've talked many times on the podcast, especially when I've had guests on about the wonderful butter from my region in the poitou charente region. It's highly sought after by pastry chefs around France because of its high saturated fat content. It melts slower than other butters, and so it in turn makes a more delicious pastry dough. The beurre charente poitou, beurre de charente, and beurre de deuxèvres obtained their AOC status in 1979. On another mention to an episode I've done on the podcast, was about the Roscoff onion and the onion johnnies. The latter being the Frenchmen that used to take their Roscoff onions to the UK to sell them as they rode from town to town on bicycles. The Roscoff onion is one of the many vegetables that have an AOC status. Spirits such as Armagnac, Calvados, Cognac and the Martinique rum all have AOC statuses. There are some fruits that have an AOC status, like the strawberries from the Perico, the Ajan plums, limousine apples, and I think a little bizarre because, well, probably wrongly, I thought that kiwi fruit were for warmer climates, but apparently not. The kiwi from Lador in the Pyrenees has an AOC status. Brioche Vendienne is one of the only protected status AOC breads in France which I find amazing, but I suppose it makes sense. With so much bread made here and how popular it is, many varieties would be made all over France, not just in a particular region with that region's products. There is even an AOC for wood, with chartreuse wood in 2018 being the first forest product to attain an AOC, and Jura wood in 2019 obtained its AOC. I mentioned Roquefort cheese and Comte cheese before, and I couldn't really find a quote about AOC, so I thought I'd bring you something that I learned about cheese in France. It's to do with the Emperor Charlemagne. He, back in the day, apparently was travelling, and he stopped at a bishop's residence at dinner time. It's said that on that day, being the sixth day of the week, he was not willing to eat the flesh of beast or bird bit picky but anyway we'll move on. The bishop being by reason of the nature of the place was unable to produce fish immediately for him so instead he ordered some excellent cheese white with fat to be placed before him. Charlemagne required nothing else. He took up his knife 
and throwing away the mould, which seemed to him abominable. He ate the white of the cheese. Then the bishop, who was standing nearby like a servant, drew close, and he said to Charlemagne, Why do you do that, Lord Emperor? You are throwing away the best part. On the persuasion of the bishop, Charlemagne put a piece of the mould in his mouth, and he slowly ate it and swallowed it like butter. Then, approving the bishop's advice, he said, Very true, my good host. And he added, Be sure to send me every year two cartloads of such cheeses. Coming to France? Are you planning a trip to France, or Paris even? Or are you one of the lucky ones that live in Paris? Well, I've been lucky enough to live in Paris as well. And I can say this, I pretty much ate my way through Paris for you. So with all that experience of eating, drinking and exploring the city of lights, love and good food, I thought, well, I need to bring that experience to you, my fabulously delicious audience. And what better way to do that than with a book? So I created my first book, a food guide to Paris called Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city. In it, you'll find more than 379 recommendations of boulangeries, cafes, chocolate shops, fromageries, markets, marchés, as we call them here in France. Yep, patisseries, restaurants, and wine bars. But there's also food streets, gourmet and kitchen supply stores, and so much more. Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city, is available on my website. It's a 2024 edition, which means that it's pretty much up to date with fabulous recommendations for you. And every year, plan on updating it so that each year is a new edition for you. You can get a copy, as I said, on my website, where you can even get a signed and gift package version, or you can go to Amazon. It's available there, and it's even available as a Kindle version. Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city. I hope you enjoy it. AOP stands for Protected Designation of Origin. As we covered and mentioned in the previous episode I did on the AOC, the AOP is the European Union's label, similar to the French AOC label or Appellation to Origin to Control. The AOP is a form of geographical indication of the European Union and the United Kingdom that is aimed to preserve the designations of origin of food related products. It was created in 1992 to designate products that have been produced, processed and developed in a specific geographical area using recognised know-how of local producers and ingredients from the region concerned. It is intended that these products carrying the label guarantee the reputation of the products and adapt to existing national protections to make them comply with World Trade Organisation requirements. AOP has been given to wines, cheeses, hams, sausages, olives, beers, fruits, vegetables, breads and even animal feed. The protected products are entered into the European Register of Protected Designations of Origin and Protected Geographical Indications, or as they call it, the EU Quality Register for short. It is run by the European Commission's Directorate General for Agricultural and Rural Development. They are recorded in a database of origin and registration, or DOR as it's called. The label for the AOP is identified by its red and gold colour. Historically, the concept of Appellation to Origin was put in place in 1905 and then replaced by the AOC in 1935. It was used to fight fraud. Mainly, the label was in place in France, but since the 1st of May 2009, the label has become European and is called the AOP, Protected Designation of Origin. In the European courts, there have been many events that have set precedent for the AOP in Europe. Take feta for example. For a long time in the EU, 90% of feta was produced outside of Greece. Interestingly, a vast majority of it was produced in France, Germany and Denmark. Those countries considered that feta was a generic name. So in October 2005, the European Court of Justice recognised that only feta produced in Greece is entitled to be called feta. The court found that the fruit of the ancestral tradition of extensive grazing and transhumanence, and that the specific flora of certain regions of Greece gives feta a special flavour and aroma. So, 
Dairy manufacturers in countries not Greece within the EU using the term feta had until October 2007 to completely eliminate the word feta from their production. Some of the most well-known foods that have AOP include Parmigiana Reggiano, Roquefort, Gorgonzola, Asiago cheese, Camembert de Normandy and Champagne. Austria has three cheeses and a ham with AOP labels. Belgium has the Ardeen butter. There's cheese from Bulgaria and Germany, halloumi cheese in Cyprus, Don's wine in Denmark, and there are salts from Ireland that all have AOP recognition. Greece has a miniature apple called the Firiki Pelou, and of course, the delicious Kalamata olives. Poland has three cheeses. Portugal has a range of wines, cheeses and ports, of course, and Spain has 13 cheeses and some meat products. Turkey even has a garlic variety with an AOP. In Finland, there's a type of potato grown in Lapland called the Lapin Purkula with an AOP. Romania has a cheese, Slovakia has a dried spice, Latvia has some large grey peas, Luxembourg has honey and a butter, Malta, it has two wines. The Netherlands has two wines and three cheeses, the most notably the Gouda from Nordhollandse. The UK has cheeses like cheddar, the Cornish cottage cream, and Stilton. But it also has a breed of sheep in the Lake District called Lackland Herdwick, and another variety from Orkney, an island off the north coast of Scotland. And a variety of sheep from the Shetland Islands as well. There's potatoes from Jersey and forced rhubarb from West Yorkshire. Italy has a lot of products and ingredients under the European AOP, rivaling France. There's the olive oils like the Apertino Piscarese olive oil the Bruzio, Sabina, Nocella, Nocciale de Belice, which has an AOP for oil and olives. Cheeses like Asiago, Mozzarella de Buffalo from Campana, Fontina, Parmigiana Reggiano, Pecorino de Felino, Pecorino Romano, Pecorino Sado, Pecorino Sicilano, and Pecorino Toscanano, and Provolone Bafadana, to name a few. But there's also meat like prosciutto de parma and a specific type of pig, the Cinta Senese, which is a breed of domestic pig from Tuscany. Some of the products with an AOP in France include the Jambon de Bayon, which is a ham from Bayon, the butter from Isle sur Mer, known as Beurre d'Isle, Champagne, Figure de Solier, Ale Rose de Lautrec, the Lentil Vert de Puy, and the Olive de Nice. Of course, there are numerous cheeses, like the Abondance, raw milk cheese, Beaufort, Brie de Meur, the Camembert de Normandy, the Cantal, the Chebichu de Poitou, which is my local cheese, the Comte, Munster, Reblochon, Roquefort, and the Valence, just to name a few. In fact, there are 46 cheeses, three butters, and two creams with the protected designation of origin, a PDO. There is even a green tea from China and a tea from South Africa that have been given AOP status in the EU. And the wines from the Napa Valley in California, as well as fish sauce from Vietnam, also have the status. Other products included from countries with, from within Europe include hay, essential oils, cochineals, and some wool. Otto von Bismarck was a Prussian politician, as well as being a prince, count. He is quoted as saying something I thought that was quite appropriate for this episode on the AOP. Otto said, Laws are like sausages. It's better not to see how they are made. That's it for another episode of Season 4 of Fabulously Delicious and the last in our summer series. We'll be back next week to our regular episodes. That's two a week, and they'll all be in video form as well for you to watch on YouTube. This one is available on YouTube, but no, 
the ones coming up in the future will be even more fabulous, I'm sure. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And remember, you know what my motto is. Whatever you do, do it fabulously. Merci beaucoup and bon app.